big salmon. Yeah, those are big salmon. Huh? And they keep the water flowing, so they have to keep swimming. Which they're traveling out of the Pacific Ocean. The Chinook salmon, which is a fish you're going to see here today, the Chinook salmon travels mostly up in the Pacific Ocean. They're going to migrate along the coast of California, Oregon, Washington, the southern Canada. They make a left turn and they're going to go out into the deep waters of the Pacific Ocean. Do a big loop out in the ocean, come back to the shore, they're reaching maturity, they make a right turn, and now they're swimming south. And they're going to come back to the place of origin. Once they come out of the ocean waters, we will see fish anywhere from about two years old. Those are little guys. However, they make that return with the adult fish. Small percentage, not the whole group of two-year-olds, but we'll see a small percentage of those two-year-old fish come back into fresh water with the adult fish, which will range from about three to four years old. And at three to four years old, they will be at the end of their life cycle. Once they come back into fresh water, they will stop feeding. And because they stop feeding, they die. They just simply die of starvation. Don't feel bad for the salmon. This is a part of nature's plan. And believe me, nature has a good plan. Physiologically, what happens in the fish? As they're coming back into the freshwater system and they start to they get into that mode, they're no longer feeding, then inside the body of the female fish, her internal organs, her internal digestive system just simply shrinks and atrophies to nothing. This leaves a cavity in the body for her to grow and develop anywhere from three to 5,000 eggs. So again, the fact that they're not feeding actually serves a physiological purpose in the body of the fish so that she can grow and carry this high number of eggs. Male fish, same thing will occur. The internal digestive system starts to atrophy and he will grow and develop large milk sacs to be able to fertilize the eggs. So again, don't feel bad for the salmon. They are at the end of their life cycle. Even the little two-year-old fish that makes his journey to come back in. Once they enter fresh water, they stop feeding, they will die just like the four-year-old fish. So again, that's a part of nature's plan. Everybody likes to get out a little bit. So you have a little fun, and now you're on that journey. Well, as soon as you come under the Golden Gate, you get through San Francisco Bay, you're now gonna start to enter into the estuary and up into that delta area and you're now gonna go from salt water to fresh water. When they get into the fresh water system of the Delta, it's gonna be a little confusing. There are multiple river systems that discharge via the two main courses of the Sacramento and San Joaquin River into the Delta. So you've got this great mixture of different river systems water. So they kind of have to get in there and navigate around a little bit, get honed in on their water, and once they get honed in on their they follow it. Just like a dog would follow a scent, they will follow their water. So they'll know to enter the Sacramento River, swim up the Sacramento River to reach the mouth of the Feather River, and then that's where I need to go. So very important that we use only raw Feather River water throughout the hatchery facility. Not only to attract the fish in, but also to incubate our eggs in and to raise our fry in so they have that imprint to the chemistry of this water and know how to return when they come back to end their life cycle. This is the ladder, this is the ladder kind of recreated the actual yeah, river. river. Those fish look like they're probably 40 pounds a piece. When 
when that fish dies naturally on the river, you certainly don't want to pick it up and eat it. Okay. What we're doing is we're taking this fish, they're right at the end of life cycle, they're ripe and ready to spawn. We kill the fish, and then the fish that will go for public consumption will be put on ice in that truck. Folks, just keep kind of working your way down. We can get everybody up to the windows here. That's all fish eggs right there in that bucket. Ready to die. They generally will die within hours to maybe just a day or so after they spawn. So, what we're doing is we've got fish out the gap, far left inside the building. You can see a large trap. Open the door to the trap, crowd the fish, spill about 50 fish into that trap. Once they're in the 20 to 25,000 adult fish. From those 20 to 25,000 adult fish, we will look to fill our incubators with about 17 million eggs. From those 17 million eggs, we will look to return back to the system every year 11 to 12 million salmon from this hatchery. Okay, when you saw them clipping the little bit of the tail and then chopping the head off, those were fish that were actually hatched here and there's a little microchip that they put in this little tiny fish when they set them back out into the ocean that um, that's how they know that there's a uh, that it was hatched here they actually cut a little portion of the tail off and so when the salmon comes back and as an adult that little portion of tail never grows back even as a tiny little fish it'll grow with that little part missing so that's how they know this is a particular fish that was hatched in this hatchery. So they take the heads and then they take them back to a biology department and dissect it and then they look at the little microchip that was left inside the head of this fish and figure out exactly where it, where it went, all the processes it went through. Pretty cool. They're going to make a small incision, it doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to be installing this first thing is called a pit tag that's a pit tag that goes in and so it just kind of identifies Harry, Jane, Bill, Joe so each fish has a name and that's the radio tag going in 